Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here. And it's Sunday and we are doing breaches of the week. And unfortunately, I happen to be traveling this week. And so by virtue of that, uh, I had to do a bit of a condensed thing. And so there you go. But this week in data breaches, nevertheless, even though it's a little more condensed this week, is actually really interesting. Now, if uh, basically uh, you sent me something, I will be giving you a shout out and up upcoming uh, Breaches of the Week video uh, and podcast and radio show, as I always do, uh, but I just wanted to let you know, uh, you know, because of this condensed time, I'm, I'm kind of under the gun here. So I wanted to get out some of the biggest breaches, and with that, we are going to start with Norway. Now, 12 Norwegian government ministries have been hit by a cyber attack, and that is according to their government about a week ago, Monday or so, and this is the latest attack to hit the public sector of Europe's largest gas supplier and NATO's Norway northernmost member, and you probably know where this is going, quote, we identified a weakness in the platform of our suppliers. That weakness has now been shut. That's according to Eric Hope, head of the government agency in charge of providing services to ministries, talking in a news conference. Now, the attack was identified due to a quote-unquote unusual traffic situation on the supplier's platform, according to Mr. Hope, and he declined to uh, provide specifics. It was uncovered on July 12th and is being investigated by their national police quote it is too early to say who is back this and what is the extent of the impact of the attack end quote and that is a direct quote for the record obviously uh you know english is not uh mr hope's first language now norway is europe's largest gas supplier after a drop uh, in Russian gas flows and Western Europe's largest oil exporter as well. So this is a pretty critical country uh, to Northern Europe. Now, the prime minister's office, as well as foreign defense justice ministries, were not affected because they're using different IT infrastructure, according to Mr. Hope. Now, Norway's state sector has been hit by cyber attacks previously, including in June, 20, uh, June of 2022, when a distributed denial of service attack or DDoS attack took place and was blamed on a, quote, criminal pro-Russian group, end quote. NATO member Norway shares a border with Russia, if you didn't know, in the Arctic and supports Ukraine with weapons, humanitarian aid, and money. So as they are sifting through the IOCs or indicators of compromise, I would probably put money that it's going to be Russia, but again, you never know. Hopefully it's not some 15-year-old kid that's really that good. We will see. Moving on, let's head on over to China and talk about the Wuhan Earthquake Monitoring Center. They're claiming a cyber attack, or do they actually have one? Now, here's what's going on. They got hit by a cyber incident, apparently, um, perpetuated by a hacker group with a, quote, overseas government background, end quote. That is according to the Global Times. Now, if you didn't know, the Global Times is owned by the Chinese Communist Party, and they reported this on July 26th that the Wuhan Municipal Emergency Management Bureau revealed that the monitoring center had been subjected to a cyber attack by a, quote, unquote, overseas organization. In its statement on Wednesday, July 26th, the Bureau said the Public Safety Center immediately sealed off affected equipment and reported the attack to authorities. And again, according to the Global Times, the newspaper also claimed that, quote, preliminary evidence suggests that the government-backed cyber attack on the center came from the United States. End quote. It said that a basically a Trojan horse program originating from abroad had been discovered at the Wuhan Earthquake Monitoring Center, as confirmed by the Jianjian Sub Bureau, a public security bureau. And that's all the information we have on that right now. So, you know, basically is a hacking group uh, connected to U.S. intelligence hitting the Wuhan or, uh, Earthquake Center. You tell me, but if you believe communist Chinese government newspapers, it absolutely is happening. I will let you decide that one. Moving on, let's head over to the United States and talk about our westernmost United State, uh, unless that's Alaska, in which case it's our second most western United State, and that would be Hawaii. Now, a ransomware attack on the Hawaii Community College Network was first reported on June 13, and apparently it has been resolved. After determining that compromised data most likely contained personal information of approximately 28,000 individuals, the University of Hawaii made the difficult decision to negotiate with the threat actors in order to protect those who had been compromised. A significant consideration in this decision-making process was that the criminal entity responsible for the attack has a documented history of publicly posting the stolen personal information of individuals when agreements uh, with the impacted entity was not reached. So it's probably like the Play Ransomware Gang, Clop, or any one of the millions of those out there. Now, working with an external team of cybersecurity experts, the, uh, the University of Hawaii reached 
reached an agreement with the threat actors, and here we are. So heads up to you if you go to Hawaii, uh, uni- uh, Hawaii Community College. And finally, like I said, it's a shorter week this week, uh, unfortunately, but there is so much information uh, you know, out there right now just due to time constraints. But like I said, we will be playing catch-up in, in an epic, mega-long uh, Breaches of the Week sooner than later. Moving on. Our finally today is Move It. And the reason why it's Move It is because this just keeps getting worse and worse. We are now, according to reports, up to at least 455 disclosing companies. And so I went ahead and went searching and found a whole bunch of different uh, entities that had been hit. So first up is U.S. government Medicare services contractor Maximus, who has disclosed the data breach, warning that attackers stole the personal data of 8 to 11 million people. On top of that, we have... uh, Pacific Premier Bancorp, Allegheny County in Pennsylvania, Harris Health System, the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center, Acelia Global Limited, Sovos Compliance, John Hopkins or Johns Hopkins, All Children's, Indiana-based First Source Bank, Kennedy Krieger Institute, also affiliated with Johns Hopkins apparently, and DHL, the large uh, carrier competitor to FedEx and UPS. Now, on top of this, the Klopp ransomware gang, the one that's been hitting just just went to work as fast as they could, may earn as much as $100 million U.S. from this extortion campaign after basically a good chunk of victims started to pay the group large sums of money, and that's according to to Coveware, who has been tracking them. So obviously this is a big issue here, uh, you know, and it continues to be incredibly lucrative, and because companies pay, why not keep hitting it? And because cryptocurrency, in terms of some cryptocurrency, still has the ability to obfuscate its its blockchains its its transaction history it just makes sense that it is I don't want to say the perfect crime because you're, you're damaging so much stuff, but it's so easy to get away with. And don't get me wrong, we do find and we do arrest these people over time, but the damage that is left in their path over years of tracking them down, I think, is horrible. So there you go. That's your quick breaches of the week. Like I said, we'll be back uh, soon with a full-blown breaches of the week, but those are the big ones that I found most interesting, and I hope you did too. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please, time to stay private. Thanks, everybody.